I'm uh, delighted now to introduce to you Senator Barack Obama. Senator Obama is remarkable for many, many reasons. Um, he riveted us all uh, with his speech at the Democratic National Convention. He's worked across the aisle uh, in both the State House in Illinois and in the U.S. Senate in a spirit of bipartisanship that is all too rare today. He has promoted uh, affordable, accessible, and high-quality health care, not just for some of us, but for all of us. Um, and importantly, uh, before he started making laws, he was teaching law, and while a law professor at the University of Chicago, he inspired a generation of young students to do the right thing and fight the right fight. Senator Obama has said, making your mark on the world is hard. If it were easy, everybody would do it. He has certainly made an indelible mark on genetics policy history by introducing in the Senate what I believe to be the first comprehensive bill addressing genetics, quality, and policy. In August, he introduced S3822, the Genomics and Personalized Medicine Act of 2006, and we are so delighted to have you uh, with us today to share your thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I, uh, I have to say that I, I apologize uh, to the previous speaker for interrupting briefly. Um, we never know when we have votes, uh, and so I have to rush over here and, and, and we'll have to rush back. Uh, I have to say I caught a little of uh, the tail end of uh, your presentation and uh, didn't understand any of it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the, the, um, uh, it, it, it is wonderful to see all of you. I, I want to start by commending uh, Dr. Hudson and, and her colleagues at the Genetics uh, and Public Policy Center uh, for their leadership in the area of genetics. Uh, they've played a critical role in educating and shaping the national genetics policy agenda. Uh, equally important, have kept the spotlight and the pressure on federal health agencies to do more to ensure the safety and effectiveness of genetic testing. And I have to say that uh, one of my former law students uh, works for you, so, the, uh, so, so uh, clearly uh, uh, you're inspiring a generation of young people as well. Uh, almost 150 years ago, uh, Gregor Mendel made history when he established the laws of heredity, which detailed his early knowledge about the fundamentals of inheritance. Uh, as has happened so many times throughout history, uh, Mr. Mendel's fellow scientists didn't fully understand, support, or necessarily agree with his hypothesis on genes, specifically how they are transmitted from one generation to the next and how they help define who we are. And yet, he persevered, growing and observing and experimenting on 10,000 pea plants for almost a decade, and today we know that he was right. I mention this story not because Mendel was an early pioneer in the field of genetics and is considered by many to be the father of genetics, but also because he had vision, he had intellectual curiosity, and courage to think independently and question the status quo, qualities that led to the scientific revolution we're in the midst of today, qualities that uh, we need in our leaders if we hope that this revolution will continue. Uh, since his time, We've unlocked many of the mysteries about DNA and RNA, about their structure and their function, and about how their code is translated into proteins that make up the tissues and organs of the human body. This knowledge isn't just sitting in books on the shelf. We've used the findings to pinpoint the causes of many diseases, such as sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, and certain kinds of leukemia. Moreover, scientists have used genetic information to develop several treatments and therapies and yet, we're just beginning, I think everybody here would agree, to realize the full potential of genomics to predict the onset of disease, uh, diagnose early and earlier, and develop therapies that can treat and cure Americans of many of their afflictions. And that's why all of you are gathered here today, and that's why uh, I wanted to take the time to come, because to, there's so many places this science can take us, and so much uh, of the status quo that's still left to question. 
today, the typical blockbuster prescription drug is effective on only 40 to 60 percent of patients prescribed them. Uh, meanwhile, serious adverse drug reactions impact 2.2 million people, kill an estimated 100,000 people per year in this country. Genomics could help change this. Uh, a drug known as Herceptin is one example of how this research has already saved lives. Herceptin is a breast cancer drug that initially failed in clinical trials, but then researchers discovered that one in four breast cancers have too many copies of a certain gene, which leads to uncontrolled and rapid tumor growth. As it turns out, Herceptin is an effective drug for patients with this type of cancer, with significantly improved survival rates for affected women. And as somebody whose mother uh, died of cancer, uh, that's something that uh, has holds great interest to me. Uh, and yet, despite the promise of drugs like this, and despite all the significant scientific advances that we've made in this field, very few genomics-based tests or treatments have reached consumers. And that's the reason that in August I introduced the Genomics and Personalized Medicine Act of 2006, which would support and encourage the efforts of federal health agencies. This bill would work to overcome scientific barriers adverse market pressures and regulatory obstacles that have stood in the way of better health care. And we do this in just a few ways. First, the bill would spur innovation by allocating $150 million for research in genomics. Second, it would provide 100 percent tax credit for private research to develop diagnostic tests that improve the effectiveness and safety of certain drugs. Third, it would modernize the Food and Drug Administration's outdated process for reviewing genomic tests. Fourth, it would help develop a system to collect, evaluate, and synthesize genomic data from around the nation, providing researchers with an invaluable resource. And finally, it would establish an interagency task force to accelerate the use of this research and would encourage the recruitment and retention of health professionals in the field of genomics. For more than a decade, We've been on the verge of a new era in medicine, but scientific hurdles, market pressures, and outdated regulations have blocked our progress. And I think that now is the time for leadership that's going to break this impasse and jumpstart the innovation that can save and improve millions of lives. Uh, now's the time uh, to remember the perseverance of pioneers like Gregor Mendel and to keep asking, seeking, and reaching for the answers that we know are out there. I don't know. I, I'm aware that in a meeting like this, I don't need to tell you the unparalleled promise genomics holds for us, uh, but I do need to ask all of you to do everything you can to support this legislation and research in the days and months to come. Uh, and uh, l let me close by just saying this. Uh, some of you may be aware of the fact that we live in an era politically where uh, science is often made subservient to ideology. Uh, I think that uh, we saw that in the stem, uh, the stem cell debate, uh, and uh, it is possible that we will end up seeing it in this area as well. Uh, and I think it's absolutely imperative then for those who have expertise, uh, those of you who are uh, grounded in science and have uh, the capacity to explain what exactly we can potentially accomplish uh, through science to make your voices heard in public policy arenas. Uh, if you're not heard, uh, then this will be determined by polls uh, and pundits. Uh, and so I hope that you use this wonderful organization and uh, the fora that uh, it provides uh, to make sure that all your voices are heard in the months and days to come. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Let me, uh, let me say this. The, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, we got a message on the way over here that uh, I had to get back, so I'm not going to have time to answer uh, any questions. But I wanted to point out in the back, Ms., uh, Dr. Dora Hughes, who is uh, my health care staffer, she's going to be staying for some of the sessions. So for those of you who are interested in uh, getting copies of the legislation, uh, would like to find out how you can uh, connect in the, uh, the effort that we're going to be moving forward. I would love for you to contact uh, Dr. Hughes uh, after you guys break from this session. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody.